Hey everyone, back again with another Flutter video. And today's session, we will look into how to integrate Chat GPT in our Flutter app. If you find this video exciting, hit the subscribe button. Only then you can follow me along with my Flutter journey. So, in order to access any of the open AI services like the Chat AI models or speech to text or image processing, so on and so forth, the open AI has provided the developers with the API access. Therefore, with the help of these API endpoints, we will be able to make the HTTP calls with the relevant request and the pre-trained model is capable of responding us back with the relevant data in the form of JSONs. So, in this video, we will look into one such API called the Completion API which will help us build this Chat AI model locally in our Flutter app. Hope you got a broad idea of what and how to integrate Chat GPT in our Flutter app. Therefore, with this idea, let's directly dive into the video and get started. First things first, let's head over to openai.com and you need to create or sign up to OpenAI. Only then you will be provided with the secret key which will be used for making API calls. After doing so, here under the developers, let's head over to the docs. And if you scroll down, you will see a bunch of OpenAI services including the generate test which is the basic chat AI model followed by speech to text, image generation etc. For this video, let's click this GPT and as you scroll down here you will notice that the open ai has provided us with two different endpoints in order to access the latest model which is the gpt4 or gpt3 which is the new year model as of 2023 you need to make use of this api endpoint or else if you are okay with the older model as of 2020 to 2022 including the davinci 3 or davinci 2 extra we can make use of the second API endpoint. For this video, we will make use of the second API endpoint which uses the DaVinci 3 model. Now let's head over to the API references here. And if you scroll down, under making request section, you will notice a basic syntax of how to make the API calls. Here this is going to be the API which is the completion API in order to integrate AI chat models. And you need to pass in the content type as well as the authorization which contains the secret key. So these are something which you need to pass in the headers. And the request parameter might differ for each of these API endpoints. If you are using only completions API, we can make use of models and prompt. Basically, it is the query which we ask to the AI model. So this is basically the syntax for making API request. And if you scroll all the way down, you will see that this is going to be the API which we are about to use in this video, which is the completions API. And it is going to be the post request. Here, the first parameter is going to be the model where they have used DaVinci 3 model. So, the prompt is nothing but as said earlier, it is going to be the query trying to send and few other parameters which we can play around in order to get fine tuned response back from the AI. So, here we have an entire set of request parameters which we can send, including the prompt, max tokens, temperature, top probability match, etc. Okay, you can just play around with these values in order to get a more precise and relevant data. And on the left side, you will also see that they have provided with a few description of each and every parameter. So you can literally see what this prompt actually stands for and what is um, the max token indicates, etc. And as you scroll down here, they have provided with the sample response data, what we might get while making the API call. Here we have the basic ID, object, model, and choices which is going to be a list so this text parameter inside the choices is basically the response which we get back from the AI model so the prompt what we have sent the AI has replied us with this data so we need to loop over this prompt and text here in the UI in order to create the AI chat model so this is basically how things are going to work hope you got a better idea now let's turn our focus to the coding part and start implementing this in our Flutter app now let's first head over to the pub spec and here in the Perspect, we have added two dependencies. One is the flutter.env, which is used for creating the .env file. And here is where we need to provide the OpenAI secret key, which we get as a result of creating an account in OpenAI. Okay, so make sure you generate your secret key and place it over here in the .env file. And the next package is going to be the HTTP, which is basically used for making API calls. And here in the Perspect, in order to access any data which is placed in the .env file, we need to add them here in the assets. So make sure you do so. Now let's head over to the main.dat file. Here in the main.dat file, we need to make use of the .env.load method inside the main method in order to access the data from the .env files. Here the my app, the home points to home page. Here the home page is nothing but a stateful widget class. Now let's try to build up the UI first. 
here inside the class let's define the variables the first is going to be the text editing controller following which we create a local variable called the response text which is initially initialized with the empty text so this response text will be updated with the data which we get from the AI model following which we create a model instance which is named as response model so which is basically used for serializing the JSON values which we get as a result of the response. Following which we create a init state in order to initialize the text editing controller. And we also make use of the dispose state to dispose the controller otherwise there might be memory leaks. Here starting with the scaffold let's provide the background color. Let's build a basic app bar. Here in the body we will make use of two widgets alone. One is the prompt builder which is basically going to display the data which the AI has provided us with the response. And the second widget is going to be the text form field builder. Okay, let's start by building up the text form field builder widget. So this text form field builder is nothing but a stateless widget class. With the basic set of alignments, we make use of the text form field widget available in Fetter. So we provide with the basic stylings here, so which is actually not in case to explain here in this tutorial. So you can design your text form field as of your choice. Followed by the text form field, we create an icon button. Okay, now let's try building up the prompt builder. The prompt builder is once again is going to be a stateless widget class since these are going to hold only the basic UI components. With the basic alignment, we try to build the text which is nothing but a simple text widget wherein we have specified that inside the container with the defined height. And here in the text form field builder, whenever the icon button is being pressed, we call this completion function. And this completion function is as follows. And here inside this completion function is where we make use of the HTTP API call. First, whenever the button is pressed, we try to replace the response text with the loading message. And we make use of the post method wherein we pass the API URL which is nothing but the completion API following which we need to provide the headers and here inside the authorization we need to provide the token which is nothing but the secret key which we have generated as a result of signing up with OpenAI so make sure you add the secret key inside the .env file and with the help of this syntax you will be able to access the value present in the .env file finally after providing the API URL and headers the last thing is going to be the body parameter so we make use of the JSON encode method. Herein we pass a list of body parameters including the model. Here the model we have defined as the DaVinci 3 model. Followed by the model we provide the prompt. So the prompt is nothing but the query data which we get from the text editing controller. So whatever the user types here in the text form field is added as a prompt over to the body. Followed by which we provide few other parameters like the max token, temperature and probability. Now after making the API call we need to update the state only then show up the data what the AI model has provided us with therefore we make the set state inside which we serialize the JSON data which we get as a result of the response. The data which we need is actually present inside the choices list as we have already discussed earlier and this text is going to hold the response data for the prompt what we have entered. So with this we complete integrating the AI chat model locally in our Fetter. Now let's refresh this app and try running it. So now Fetter app is running the way it is expected. So our AI model is now able to respond us back with the relevant data. So this is basically how you can integrate chat GPT in your Fetter app locally. And let me know what questions or queries you would ask to this chat GPT. Mention them in the comments below. Hope you guys found this tutorial useful. If you do so, consider subscribing and I will see you again in the next video.